On Friday, Hollywood takes another shot at the great Gatsby. It was F. Scott Fitzgerald's most famous novel. Gatsby might be more popular now than ever, but another part of Fitzgerald's background gets far less attention. Jeff Gore looks at the days that he had at the Saturday Evening Post. Is all this made entirely from your own imagination? The Great Gatsby defined an era. Lavish displays of wealth, epic American ambition, passion pursued okay. to no end. It also defined F. Scott Fitzgerald's life. He lived about as exorbitantly as he could. He didn't deny himself or deny Zelda much of anything. Fitzgerald's quest for his love, Zelda, was mirrored by Jay Gatsby's pursuit of the fictional Daisy Buchanan. To win Zelda, the Midwest-born Fitzgerald needed money. It finally arrived courtesy of the Saturday Evening Post, which so many still identify with those famous Norman Rockwell covers. Post archivist Jeff Nilsson. As far as publishing, we were the 800 pound gorilla and there's never been anything to match it. Prior to the Post, there were a few magazines here and there, but nothing that aimed to uh, approach all readers anywhere in America. Fitzgerald wrote 68 stories for the Post over the course of 17 years, earning him a total of $2 million. In today's world, that's about $20 million from one magazine. He was earning $400 in 1920 dollars uh, for those two pieces. And by the time they got to At Your Age in 1929, he was $4,000. And he stayed there for quite a while. How did his writing and his short stories from 1920 to 37 in the post change? He was a very much an entertaining, um, humorous, romantic writer in the 20s. It was very commercial, which doesn't diminish its quality, but it was very much magazine fiction. Over time, he started incorporating more modernist tones into his material. We're surrounded here by how many years of history? 192 years of history. All the stories are now found here, in the archive room of The Post in Indianapolis, Indiana, where the magazine is still published, albeit once every two months, not once a week. The Saturday Evening Post in 1850, and the Saturday Evening Post in 2013. Joan Servas's family bought the company in 1970, after the Post went out of business, following a rapid drop-off in readership. There are a good number of people who don't even know the Saturday Evening Post is even published. Yes, I know. We, we try to keep that really secret. <laughs> when you hear that, what's your reaction? We're working on changing that now. Servas wants to gain back those readers and respect with a new generation. She knows it will not be easy. But in a way, it's a battle for recognition that's been waged before. Even in its heyday, some regarded Fitzgerald's short magazine stories for the Post as pandering. Hemingway taunted him, saying, the Post is going to be the graveyard of your talent. But he said at the end of his career, I'm, I never compromised. I was always honest with those stories. I never went for a cheap formula. Nelson believes Fitzgerald always stayed true to his readers. His boss thinks the Post can, too. I look at what the Post did in the past and its history and how it chronicled America as we evolved. And I would like to see the Saturday Evening Post continue to carry on those traditions. Nice piece. So, um, Thank you. You know what I love is the personalities of F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway and the competition that existed among their larger-than-life writers. It is wonderful stuff even to talk about today. I cannot wait to see the movie, too. You haven't yeah. seen it yet. I have not Gil, yet you seen saw it. it. I've seen it. And, and, it and will the magazine your, make it's it? It's worth your time. Listen, they're trying. They're trying, and I think they have a great new editor. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, we wish them the, the best of yeah. luck, mm -hmm. but um, they're working on it.